What's up fans of hardcore saber dueling? Um, I felt inspired today to do an in-depth review video on a new product that's come out by a company called Bendu Armory, spelled B-E-N-D-U. Um, and if you wanna check out their products, what they've got going on right now, um, it's BenduArmory.com. And as you guys know, I don't do a ton of review videos, uh, but this one, compelled me to, to do a review video because I'm very, very excited about this project and I'll go into many reasons why. Um, yeah, so on Facebook I saw that Bendu Armory had come out with the world's first carbon fiber lightsaber. And as you guys know that watch my channel, I'm all about the world's first. I'm all about cutting edge technology. And so when I started reading that this was manufactured from carbon fiber, um, I was all in for many reasons. One, I'm a huge fan of carbon fiber. Um, used to be you know, in the Air Force, and so I was around carbon fiber when it was being developed um, for aircraft purposes and things like that. And then you know, I, uh, I've, I've got like a sport motorcycle. I've got a, a vintage 1988 uh, GSX-R 750, my all-time favorite uh, sport bike, and it's got carbon fiber all over it. So there love carbon fiber i had to see one of these in person and try it out and also in the back of my mind i was hoping that this would help solve the bluetooth transmission rf issues uh, that i'm having with aluminum hilts metal hilts in general um, steel hilts getting a bluetooth signal in and out of a metal hilt lightsaber and so um, when it came in this is pretty much what i received in the mail from bendu armory and uh, they accommodated my request. I actually asked for a raw aluminum blade holder. Um, and so then I put it on the polisher and I gave it like a chrome-like finish right here. And then I added my own chrome button, but, but it does come with a button, um, like a black button. And so I think you have different uh, coating options on this. On the website, you can select when you order it. Also different uh, color schemes on the carbon fiber. I ordered just the... Um, just the regular weave on it because I wanted to try this out and see how I liked it and also try it out with Bluetooth sound transmission. And so when I got it in right away, I was so excited about this. I installed uh, a, a Nano Biscotti version four, uh, which you guys know I don't usually use those. I like my two button um, sound cards. And, but this came with the chassis and the chassis was already set up for a Nano Biscotti version four. Of course, I had to make it NeoPixel. Um, so yeah, I, I'm loving it. This thing is just a blast. So um, when, I, when I installed everything, of course, on the flip side of the chassis, which I'll open it up and show you guys what I've done, um, over many years of research and a bunch of money spent on you know finding different Bluetooth sound transmitters, I finally found one out of the probably 20, 30 I've tested that actually turns on and goes straight into pairing mode when you apply power to it. None of the others I've found do that. So what I like about this card you know, that I found is it kind of goes into deep sleep along with the Nano Biscotti. And then when I wake it up, I don't have to take the chassis out of the hilt every time to get the Bluetooth sound transmitter to activate again and go into pairing mode to pair it with any Bluetooth enabled device. So um, what happened was is I went ahead and put this in the hilt for the first time with the Bluetooth transmitter on it. And it was my fault. I discovered that Bluetooth RF will not go through carbon fiber. I did not know that going into this. Again, my fault. I didn't Google it beforehand and find out that the RC guys that are building like quadcopters and, you know, uh, carbon fiber airplanes for remote control use and stuff or putting antennas outside of the carbon fiber um, to get you know their their remote control signals in and out of these carbon fiber bodies so um, right away after I discovered this I ran down to my shop in the laser cutter and uh, cranked out my own acrylic hilt so here it is I'm gonna slide this in the sleeve after I go through all the functions of what I've done on the Sabre with the fonts and then the Nano Biscotti V4. Um, so yeah, this was just something that for fun, 
I, I threw together on the laser cutter with clear acrylic. Um, of course, this isn't crazy dual worthy, um, you know, for full gorilla dueling or anything uh, because it's eighth inch acrylic. And I haven't gone crazy with it yet. I'll probably test it out later, see how it holds up. Um, so yeah, there's that Drop the Jedi Arms Dealer logo on there just for fun and etch some grips in it and stuff. And so, yeah, there's that. I'll slide it in the sleeve after I go through um, all the functions on this uh, particular setup that I have. So, um, yeah, let me just give you like a 360 of, um, of the manufacturing on this. I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. This, this thing is pretty cool. And so, um, you know, th this is a new breed of lightsaber completely from top to bottom. Um, you know, the technology that's gone into it for me is just pretty incredible stuff. And I don't see this being a huge competitor with aluminum and metal hilt lightsaber companies uh, because this is in a class of its own. And I'm gonna go into detail after I had a nice chat with Andrew about the future of what they're gonna do with carbon fiber and other materials that's pretty exciting stuff for the future of, of Bluetooth technology. And uh, so once we got on the same page with the whole Bluetooth thing, both of us were pretty excited about what you know, their company has the capability to do with different materials. And um, so, yeah, again, you know, these guys are like in a class of their own. And um, so here we go. Uh, again, I polished the top rail of this, but left, um, these come sandblasted, but left the aluminum um, raw on the inside just because I like the two-tone look. Of course, it's a NeoPixel, so there's your NeoPixel connector, Plector Pixel connector. Um, and then it comes with a, you know, CoverTech wheel. This is your blade retention, of course. And so uh, it's gone to sleep because I've been talking so long. Um, and then there's sound holes in the back here. And so one of the things that Andrew and I talked about was maybe adding some sound holes on the top because one of the things that I noticed is, <clears throat> excuse me, depending on how you hold the saber, the sound is pointing down if you're holding it like this. And then if you know you wanna hear it louder, you can tip it up like this, whatever your dueling style is. But um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, take it out of deep sleep. Power sequence initiated. And so what I did was um, I put a white illuminated LED switch in there, 12 millimeter for myself to match the chrome. And then uh, also, so the reason this is flickering is uh, I kind of discovered a trick recently where you can take candle flickering LEDs, hook them in line on the same circuit, and so then I did this. So it looks like there's like fire coming out of the back. And if you look in there, there is uh, my speaker, speaker assembly with the LED. And so, I don't know, I kind of was, this was reminiscent for me of like being in the military and the Air Force, like a jet engine looking type of concept. When I get the, the chassis out, you'll see that I've added like, a jet engine cone on the back of the chassis to really increase the compression on the sound of this. And this is now the loudest saber I have um, outside of, of the hilt um, and, then, and then in this sleeve. And I think when I add a second set of sound holes in here, this saber is gonna be you know, my loudest saber in my collection now. So here we go, let's go ahead and fire this thing up, show you what it sounds like. This is actually uh, Mad Cow's OT Vader and I edit it and put all of the uh, like the deeper swing tones on it just because I love that sound and I kind of wanted this to be like halfway between like a Jedi and a Sith Saber type of thing. I don't know, gray Jedi if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but here you go. So yeah, Nano Scotty V4. Sound holes up, it's loud. Alright, I'll just show the next one. So real easy to get out of the hilt. Let's get out the Allen tool. I'll take out the CoverTech wheel. Show you guys just how easy this is to slide out. CoverTech wheel. Um, blade retention. And then 
pop it out of here. And I'm gonna go over the chassis. So there is your Nano V4. Um, love this chassis. It, it's, I think it's made out of nylon is what they said. And it's really strong material. When I got out the Dremel and had to, you know, I did a custom install on it myself. So when I got out the Dremel, um, when I had to make these channels for a high amp power switch, cause it's a NeoPixel, um, you know, I made room for it right here. This was my location. So here's the Bluetooth card I've discovered and created my own magnetic recharge port. And um, that, you know, that's how I charge the Sabre. And so that's a built-in half amp recharge. Um, and uh, there's the Bluetooth antenna. And so, yeah, again, Nano Biscotti V4. And then um, all this is pretty much stocked through here. 18650 high drain from TCSS. Um, and then, you know, here's the... 3D printed version. And so, yeah, this is my addition on the back that I did with like a jet engine. This is an aluminum flange on here that kind of cuts down the power. And then uh, one of my one of my preferred speakers that I found and I can't get them anymore. Um, I don't know, something I found out of China eons ago. And so it, it sounded, I tried a bunch of different speakers and this is the one that worked out. So um, let's go to the next font. And this is a truly evil font that I did uh, eons ago. It was my first Plector Labs custom font. I did myself, ran it through a crazy sound of processor, and this is this is what happened. It's pretty dark sound and distorted. So you can actually grab it right here. All right, so let's go ahead and drop it in the acrylic sleeve. Right like that. And so I love this U-channel design. Bam. And then we'll get out the tool again and drop in blade retention. And then I'm gonna put, go ahead and put the blade in. Here's blade retention. And this makes the clear acrylic part of it even that much more secure. There we go with the cover tech wheel and just tighten it down. All right, put the blade in. This is my experimental blade right now. I haven't finished it out because this actually is becoming my test saber for everything I like to do with Bluetooth transmission, um, trying out you know the new NeoPixel tech trying to find different materials that cut down on shadowing on the two strip blades. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm just using this for testing top to bottom. And that's what I love about it. I've always wanted like a testing saber. And so this, this for me is it. Um, so there blades in and, uh, we'll see what happens. There we go. All right. Yeah. So, Insanely bright uh, mix of blue and green on the side. All right, next font. Power sequence initiated. Yeah, straight red. Beautiful color. And I'll just do one more. And so what I did was uh, really tweak the color to try to get an amber, I'm sure you can see the reflection in the glass on the table. And so this is an amber that matches uh, the LED in the back. Same, same hue as the, as the LED in the back. So with all of that said, when I had this chat with Andrew about this product, we started talking about how I've been trying to solve the Bluetooth RF transmission issue for a very long time. And so my first question to him was, is there a way to make these in a material like fiberglass um, where the RF can get in and out of the hilt? And so um, he says, you know what? That shouldn't be a problem at all. As a matter of fact, we could probably do it with uh, Kevlar. And so now they're talking about doing three options between carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. And... Uh, so yeah, we were brainstorming and talking about, you know, how cool this would be, uh, you know, if, if you approach it, like Disney with this idea and say, you know, hey, when you guys are doing your onstage performances or whatever uh, at, at the, you know, the tournament meets, 
you can hook these up to like big stereo systems uh, inside, you know, wherever you're dueling or in your living room on your surround sound system, like I've talked about before, or, you know, I've got a, a pretty big sound system in the car. And so I have yet to hook this up to that and I'm going to video it and, and upload it soon. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much the gist of, uh, what Andrew and I discussed about the future of Bendu Armory. I think this is going to be an amazing product. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to pause the video here. Okay, everybody, I'm back with the Bendu Armory review and I just got a message from Andrew uh, with some pretty cool updates I had to share. Um, so here, I'm gonna slide the iPad right in front of the camera. Never done this before, let's see if you guys can see. So far, so good. Um, so this is the blue carbon Kevlar that can be RF compatible for Bluetooth transmission. And so he's just showing me like a sample piece of it and then uh, a couple of days later, he sent me this. And this is a fiberglass Bindu Armory lightsaber in its raw form. Um, the sound holes haven't been put in it or the U-channel for the chassis slide in. He's gonna go ahead and update that stuff and I, I went ahead and purchased this. I had to have the fiberglass version for RF transmission. So this one's on the way to me and I'm gonna wait to do the Bluetooth demos uh, in, in you know the living room and then my car stereo uh, until after it gets here, because I, I gotta show I gotta show this off. This is uh, you guys know I'm all about the cutting edge stuff. So um, here's another shot of it, and then uh, I just got this one from him today, so I had to add an edit, and here we go. This is I'm pretty sure the blue carbon uh, Kevlar, um, which is my new favorite because blue is my favorite color, and um, so yeah, I had to share this. This is pretty cool stuff. There we go. So there, that is, that is kind of the update of, of what's going on with, with Bendu Armory. And Andrew wanted me to let everybody know, um, if you guys have any custom special requests or anything like that, contact them. Sound hole requests, color requests. Um, they have metallic weaves. They can do you know pretty much whatever they want right now um, as far as color schemes and things like that go. And then um, I'm sure they're updating all their materials on their website and the pull down menus and ordering processes. So. Uh, yeah, contact him. If you guys are into this, I'm way into it. I think this is going to be really fun, hardcore dueling, full contact type stuff uh, with, with a lot of these materials. So that is it for now on the review. Uh, stay tuned, and I will be throwing up the Bluetooth transmission video and show you guys why you absolutely have to have a Bluetooth transmitter in your lightsaber. I genuinely believe that within the next year or two, um, that's going to be just a standard option in lightsabers in the future. Um, so here's one of the many, or one of the, one of the many options that we have available. But right now, the only option available for Bluetooth RF transmission um, outside of carbon fiber. So that's it, guys. That's my full review on it. Um, everyone, take care. Thanks again for watching, and may the force be with you.